Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. Today is Wednesday, June 26th, 2019. Uh, again, nice little breeze going today. Beautiful, beautiful day here at the homestead. I'm just gonna pan this around real quick. We're gonna jump right into topic. We're gonna talk about solar power here too a little bit later, but we're gonna jump right into topic first. We have 99 operational nuclear power plants in the United States, okay? They produce 15% of all the electricity that we use in the United States. What happens to those power plants, nuclear power plants, if an EMP happens? Now, a lot of the nuclear power plants have a way to shut down safely right now if, a, if an emergency happens they have a system in place that helps them shut down in a safe manner but in the case of an EMP if an EMP happens there is no way that those would shut down safely so basically what you would be looking at you would basically be looking at 99 uh, Chernobyl disasters happening around the country so you would be talking about radioactive material when these things blew. You would be talking about radioactive gases coming off these plants, radioactive water. All right, uh, you're talking about a lot, a lot of problems. So let's think about this. I want you to think about this. Okay, one of the nuclear power plants that I that I know that is in our area here in New York is on Lake Ontario. So EMP happens that blows, that's right on the lake. Where do you think a lot of that contamination is going to end up going? It's going to go into the lake, destroying the lake, destroying the, uh, you know, the fish and stuff like that, and just basically ruining that for everybody. And I know that's not the only nuclear power plant on Lake Ontario. So, you know, times that by how many other nuclear power plants are around Lake Ontario, either on Canada's side or our, our side, and it kind of gives you an idea just how deadly that situation is. And let's talk about the other Great Lakes as well. You know there's nuclear power plants on the other Great Lakes as well. So you're talking about a total devastation of that ecosystem for fish and everything else. It would all be radioactive and it would be, you know, destroyed. And anything in a general area for quite a ways would not be habitable uh, after that. So... And then again, depending on which way the winds are blowing, I mean, you're talking about a disaster within a disaster. So an EMP in itself would be devastating for this country. But when you throw in, and I think a lot of people don't think about this, you know, and that's why I wanted to bring up this topic today. 99 potential Chernobyls waiting to happen if there's an EMP. So you're talking about a very, very scary, scary situation. Now, if the power goes out, if there's a power outage, like if the grid went down, um, they have backup ways to safely shut down those nuclear power plants. Thank goodness. Okay. So, but again, if we were talking about an EMP type of situation, we're talking about devastation. And this is just, all I'm talking about is in the United States. Okay. I'm just talking about the 99 active nuclear power stations in the United States. So you're talking about a just a nightmare waiting to happen. Just a nightmare waiting to happen. So uh, something to think about, obviously. How do you plan for that? Well, obviously you don't want to be really close to a nuclear power station. Um, I know that like uh, in Ontario County in New York, uh, I used to work for a young man in Webster, New York. Great kid, still alive, still doing okay. Uh, but he, and he's not a kid anymore, he's in his late 20s now, but I started taking care of him at 10, so to me he'll always be a kid, but anyway, so, but uh, he's a great young man, but anyway, in, in there, they have sirens and stuff out in that area, warning sirens, if something is going on with a nuclear power plant, to give people a warning that they either need to get out of Dodge or whatever, but again, EMP happens, those early warning systems are not going to be working and so unless you are aware ahead of time of your surroundings where you are geographically located 
near that power plant and how ready you are, um, you know, you can be prepped up to the wazoo, but if nuclear radiation is going to hit your whole area, uh, there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do about that. So, I mean, again, those are, those are, these are different things, guys, that people don't think about. You know, everybody thinks band-aids, beans, and bullets. That's what people think about when it comes to prepping. But it's more to it than that. There's other things to worry about. There's other things to take into consideration. So those are, uh, those are very, very worrisome situations that we need to think about and uh, have a game plan in place for those. So what are you going to do? I mean, again, look at your location. See where you are. Oh, I wanted to show you too. It's back up. <laughs> we got it back up. Um, you know, look at those situations. See where you're located, you know, near a nuclear power plant or not. Again, when I picked this property, guys, I'm telling you, I picked this property very, very strategically. Um, it was done on purpose. Hold on a second. We're going to take a look here. Uh, so solar today, 2.7 so far on this one, 3.2 so far on this one. So we're looking at 5.9 uh, kilowatt hours right now. Um, the reason you hear this running, Heather is taking a shower at the moment. Because I told her to take a shower because she's got to get ready for her um, award ceremony tonight. So it's about 3.30 in the afternoon right now. So we're almost up to 6 kilowatt hours. And we're bringing in great power um, on the two systems right now. So, and we're still in float even with her jumping in the shower. So, that's why that's running like it is at the moment because it's got more draw on the system because the pump is working uh, for the well system. So, that's why you're hearing that. But yeah, so we're already at 5.9 kilowatt hours on the day already. So uh, yesterday we ended up with 5.5 kilowatt hours yesterday. So again, another great day solar-wise. Just a very, very nice day today. Uh, very low-key day, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't do anything today just because I really didn't want to get into any projects and then have to like stop partway through. And uh, I had a late night last night, so my own fault. Nobody else's fault. But uh, that's what... Uh, that's what happened. So I'm going to turn this around. So this morning what we did is I had some uh, old apples and I cored them first so that the uh, the seeds were not given to the chickies. And I just gave them the other parts of the apples and they were absolutely loving the apples. So, but the chickens are doing fine. Um, you can see some of the poles are bending over. So I will be taking the, uh, somebody had made a suggestion of getting five gallon buckets. And uh, I'm going to be doing that. That's going to be, this gonna, that's going to happen this week. So that's a project that will be getting worked on very, very soon uh, with the five gallon buckets. And then I'm going to put something over the top as well. So um, like some kind of a cap type of thing on top of the, uh, of the uh, wood as well. So those things will be uh, definitely taken care of. What's going on, babies? How's everybody? So, so we got Mr. King Rooster, and then his protege over here, and then we have, like I said, all the hens. Let's see. We got five of the white hens and one white rooster, and three of the hens are out here. The other one must be in. She might be in the nesting box. And I didn't bring my keys with me because I wasn't even thinking about it. But, uh, yeah, the chickens are doing great. Uh, I, as you can see, all the apples are gone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're, they're very, very good chickens. Very mellow. So that, that's very helpful as well. So, but anyway, guys, back on topic. I want to hear what your thoughts are. What do you think about the fact that, uh, you know, we have... 99 potential Chernobyls sitting right here in the United States. If an EMP attack happens, uh, we are looking at a lot, a lot of problems, and not just from having power outages. So that would just be something else to exasperate the problem already, is trying to deal with that on top of everything else. Uh, so I did want to mention two couple things real quick. Tonight, my live stream will not be at 8 o'clock. It will be at 9 o'clock because my daughter has her award ceremony tonight, so I have to be there for that. And uh, 
I wouldn't miss that for the world, I'll be honest with you. So we're going to be doing the live stream tonight at 9 o'clock. We're going to be talking about the San Andreas Fault um, out there in California. A lot of interesting activity happening in the fault area and concentrated in a very small area. And so we're going to be talking about that tonight and what the potential issues with something like that is going to be uh, for California. So if that uh, goes off, so we're going to we're going to be talking about that. And uh, so that's going to be the topic of tonight's live stream. And so that will be at nine o'clock tonight, not eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So look for that. Um, I did want to mention also we're still running the sale on the website, 25% off all bucket meals. So if you're looking to add long-term freeze-dried food storage to your, you know, your preps, uh, we sell legacy food on my website, preppernurse1.com, which is in the link below. And again, if you want to get a hold of me guys as well, email, that is now in the link below. It comes up on every video. And also my P.O. box is also in that link as well down below. So you'll see all that information. So to be able to get to the website, the uh, P.O. box is there, and also my email is there. So if you were trying to get a hold of me, that's the best way to do it is through email. So anyway, um, again, like I said, if you're looking to take advantage of that, their sale is going to be going on through the 30th. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of that as well. Uh, like I said, just a beautiful day here today. Nice breeze, uh, which is really, really nice. It is, I think, around 80 degrees, maybe 82 today. So really, really nice. And with the breeze, it just makes it so much more pleasant. Great day for power here at the homestead. So that is awesome as well. Um, I want to hear your feedback on this topic, okay, guys, because it's an important topic. And uh, anyway, I will see you all tonight in the live stream. If you would like to join us, that's great. Uh, remember, guys, if you are not subscribed, subscribe, like, share. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notifications and updates and stuff like that. So, uh, and share our journey here with us at the homestead, okay? Uh, remember, guys, we are all in this together. That's important to remember. Also, remember, hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every single day. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen in life. So to let the people that you care about, let them know every day how you feel. It's so, so important, okay? Also, remember, guys, STD. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to accomplish, whatever you're trying to do, you can do it. The only one that can stop you from getting there is yourself. Nobody else can stop you. So that's important to remember as well, okay? I hope everybody's doing well. I will see you all tonight in the live stream. If you hope, hopefully you will join us, and we will be talking about California and the San Andreas Fault, okay? I will talk to you later. Prepper Nurse One, out for now.